trying to take you. It's only God who can keep you. And we need to recognize who he is and the power that he possesses, the power that keeps us going. So it can be people, places, and things. Places like casinos and racetracks and, and, and places of ill repute. Ouch. Excuse me, I just stepped on somebody's toe. I'm not apologizing for it, but I am asking you to excuse me, please. I know I just stepped on somebody's toe there. And I'm not even going to go to the lottery machine and the, 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 the one-armed bandits and the program. I mean, I'm not even going to go there. But uh, we have to recognize who provides our needs. It isn't those things. It is God. But those are things that are trying to pull us away from God. Places. Things. Things that we put first in our life. Things that we worship before we worship, we worship God. Things that cause addictions. We have so many things in our life that cause us to look to those things instead of looking to the hills from what cometh our help. So these things are people, places, and things, or strongholds in our life that are pulling us back from uh, serving God the way that He would have us to. And like in the military, you have different ranks. Some are privates, some are corporals, some are uh, lieutenants, some are uh, sergeants. All the way up to general. But just like we are all unique in our own way, some are tall, some are short, some are have black hair, some have uh, blonde hair, some have brown hair. We all have a uniqueness about us that separates us. What, what if it was that we all looked alike? What if we all looked alike? How would you recognize one another? Even identical twins have something about them that is different. They're not totally identical. And sometimes only their mama can recognize what it is. But God has made us unique in our own way for a reason. And, and we need to know that it is, it is only through the grace of God that we are made the way that we are. We are fearfully and wonderfully made. Don't let anybody tell you that you're not beautiful, especially in the eyesight of the Lord. You are beautiful people. We are all beautiful. And, 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 and sometimes we just allow people to tear us down and, and, and just destroy our, our, our demeanor and, and, and change us. And, and that places us in bondage. We are no longer free then. We're going on what other people are telling us. But we are free in the Lord. We are free in God. And we need to recognize that God made me a special way, and I'm unique, and I'm a child of the king. I am somebody. I'm the righteousness of Christ in Christ Jesus. I'm the righteousness of God. I am uh, what God has created me to be. And God didn't just, God doesn't make mistakes. I'm here for a reason. And that reason, it, we all have different reasons. We all have different things that, that, that God has uh, gifted us with. And we need to use those gifts to give glory to God. But I, I just thank God that we are all unique in our own way. And we have uh, some differences uh, in, in, in the way that we look and in, in the way that we act and the way that we are. But we, we should all give God glory for everything that he's done, he has done in our lives. And, and even though we all may be different, there is one thing that we all have in common. We all want to be free. We don't want to be bound up, chained up, locked up, and and, 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 and any, anything that, that holds us back. We all want to be free. We want to be able to do the things that we want to do. That is called freedom. But what you have to understand is freedom comes with a price. Freedom comes with a price. And somebody has to pay that price. When I was a kid growing up, I could not wait to get out of high school. I could not wait to get on my own, to do my own thing, to get out of my parents' house and make my own choices and make my own decisions. How, how many of us was like that? We just couldn't wait to get out the house. Young people today, they cannot wait to get out their parents' house. They want to make their own choices and, and do their own thing. They don't want to have to listen to mom and dad anymore. But little did I know that along with freedom comes responsibility. In other words... In order to be free, in order to pay my bills and to buy my food and, and put gas in my car, I had to go out and find a job. I had to work. And then 
and guess what? I was no longer free anymore because I had a boss telling me what to do. Amen? We always have to answer to someone, some type of authority. What is freedom? Does that mean that I don't have to listen to anybody else or, or, or some, uh, do the things that somebody else is telling me to do? And the answer to that is no, because we are always under the authority of someone else. Even when you think you're free, you go out and break the law. See if you don't have to answer to somebody like the police or the judge. You're never truly free except for when you're free in the Lord and in the power of his might. That's when we are truly free. As it was mentioned earlier, we're celebrating uh, in the Independence Day weekend. And the, uh, the Independence Day weekend is celebrating our separation from British rule. We were once uh, under the British law. Uh, so if, if things would have remained that way, we'd have been around like this. I can't say nothing about, uh, about that person. That's how we be talking. But thank God, I mean, that sounds strange to talk to us, but how we talk is strange to them. But the United States was once part of the British government. But in 1776, the Declaration of Independence was signed. And we became the United States of America, a free country. But are we really free? We still have laws and boundaries and things that we can do and we can't do. And I thank God that we have more freedom in this country than, than they do in lots of other countries. Thank God for that. Thank God that we can come out to church and lift up holy hands unto the Lord. Because they can't do that everywhere. Thank God that I can go out in the street and say, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for blessing me. Thank you for keeping me. I can go out in the street and do that. They can't do that everywhere else. But yet we still have people that don't want to give God any praise. But I just thank God for the freedom and the liberty that he has given me. And, and I, I, I know that, you know, that we, we worship the Lord in different ways, but still inside there should be a fire burning. There should be something inside of us that, uh, that, that, that continues to have us to press to see what the end is going to be. Even though this thing comes in front of me and this comes before me and, and we have stumbling blocks and roadblocks and, and things are, the enemy's attacking us on every side. But we still have faith in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ that he's going to get us through this. That we can continue to look to the hills from our help, which come in our help, and, and know that God is there pulling us, and, and he's pulling us unto himself. The Holy Spirit is drawing us. He's saying, come on, my child. I'm waiting here with open arms, ready to, ready to receive you. And I will help you. As long as you keep your hands in my hands, I will help you to get to the place where I'm trying to bring you through. But our faith has to be in God, and that's where our freedom lies. How we feel, how we think should no longer control us by the way the world says it, how we should think and how we should feel. We should be free in the Lord. And, and that comes in your mind. Our, our minds have to be free. Our minds have to be transformed and renewed. Our, our minds have to uh, uh, be, be changed. And therefore, that will drop down to our hearts. And then no longer will we look at things the same way that we used to. The things of this world have, have no more control over what we do. But in order for that to happen, we must stand fast in the liberty that Christ has made us free and not be entangled with the yoke of bondage that this world places us in. For he who the Son sets free is free indeed. For that which a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. For you can think yourself happy. You can think yourself sad. You, you know, we can be in jail, but still be free in the Lord and in the power of his might. Freedom is not so much where we're at. Freedom is where we're at in our minds. There's a lot of people in jail who are serving the Lord, and they're free. They're free in their minds because their minds have been transformed. And therefore, they can still have joy. 
Even though they're incarcerated, they can still have the love of God in their heart. That's freedom. That is true freedom. The power that we can have.